but because of the work you are doing, I think that when I leave, there must be some people who you continue this tradition of living life for other people. I have discussed with Elikan, I have decided to give you five acres of that land. Hey. Hey. Anytime you are oh in the border, you have your own land. You ah. decide to do whatever you can do with As we speak now, there is light over there. Ah. You can even use sell it as building block. If you get to my land, where I'm doing the farming now, there is electricity. Yeah. There is electricity. It's only that it's in a village setting. The place is very peaceful. The vegetation is nice. If you see the farm that I've made there now, you feel like it. So five acres for you and then the children you are going to have with oh. my daughter-in-law. Oh that God. is what I want, we, we want to That's do for so you. Nice. Yeah. That's just so big. for God bringing you into our life. It's not just because you were told that if I have this center, five more girls would have and five girls left, five girls came. Yes. Then right now, two others, mm. making seven. As if by design, wow. you have yeah. come, you and your people, seven. So I feel that those ladies who could have become prostitutes or wage workers, their lives are going to be turned around and they become breadwinners for their families in their own little ways. For me, that is what life should be. It's really very touching, you can see from their faces. Donating it to you, just in support, in appreciation of what you are doing for people, just to encourage you to do more. Good morning, still right here in the Volta region of Ghana. I just woke up because yesterday, after everything that happened, I was super tired, so I had to rest. And listen, whenever I want to rest in the Volta region, it's so hard for me to choose the place to rest until Africa Hill Resorts came through. Such a beautiful resort, serene environment. Listen, the resort is on a hill and it's so African to the extent that everything that you've seen is Afrocentric. Can you believe that the rooms in here got African names like, I mean countries in Africa. So you have Ghana, Cameroon. Personally, I spent time in Cameroon. So if you're from Cameroon and you're expecting Wadamaya to come to Cameroon very soon, forget it because <laughs> I'm actually in Cameroon right here in Ghana so I'm not coming anytime soon but it's really cool to find out all the countries in Africa representing in the rooms of a hotel I've never seen anything like this before which means that the owner of this hotel is so pan-african and listen this is the Africa that we want so I'm just gonna tell you all if you ever get a chance to visit the water region of Ghana specifically Ho which is the capital of this beautiful region make sure you choose African Hill count spend at night in here they got Wi-Fi they got breakfast they got I mean everything to make your stay in the water region the best when it comes to Africa Hill Resorts we have more comfortable rooms and we are on the top of the hill where you can view the whole township and also view the other side of the mountain which is called Clefe and we also give you a service with a smile yeah and you can see the environment you can enjoy the oxygen fresh and here it is very airy yeah so we have the Lazarus rooms ever even though we are on the top of a hill but we make sure that all our rates are affordable and our meals are also at a very tasty and at affordable rates when you sleep in African Hill Resort, listen, the resort is beautiful. But for me, what stands out is the view. Can you guys believe it? I mean, waking up to this view right over there is what? Therapeutic. And listen, when you go in front of the hotel, you got another view which is mind blowing. Listen, Africa is definitely a place to be. African Hill Resort is actually my number one destination in the Volta region. Uh, 
first of all, I want to say thank you so much for that. No one has ever gifted me a land before. You know, I, I did a video saying that one of the most expensive gifts I've ever received in my entire life was somebody buying me a MacBook. So who's gonna edit on this one? This, this is the most expensive gift I've ever got in my entire life. Well, well let them see you saying that. Oh, For saying... real? This is the most expensive gift I've ever got in my entire life. I've, no one has ever gifted me anything like this before. And today, I mean, you're giving me five acres of land. And I just want to say thank you. Uh, I went to my room yesterday and I had to shed tears, man. What have I done to receive five figures of life? What am I even going to do with it? I mean, we are on our way going there and I believe that there are so many people who don't really know who you are because now you're wearing a cap today. You see, Professor Lumumba once said that one of the challenges we have is that our leaders in Africa don't have ideas. And those who, are, don't, those who have ideas do not have power. It seems you love mm -hmm. Professor Lumumba, eh? Yeah, he's my mentor. Have you ever met him before? No, I have never. Have met. you ever spoken to him before? No. Do I've you, do... been following him on YouTube. Maybe I need to connect you and Professor Lumumba. That would be great. That would be great, eh? Yeah. So right, right after this, I think before I get out of here, I will make sure you speak to Professor Lumumba. That would be great. Are you a farmer, though? Yes, uh, my grandfather. My my grandfather was a farmer. Okay. And. Uh, he had about uh, 2,000 acres of land. So right from the time I was a child, I fell in love with farming. Yeah. So even now, I still farm. And I will take you to the farm, you see. And I have uh, 80 acres of land that I'm using at the moment. And because of the philanthropic work you are doing, the way you are touching lives, I feel I should give you five acres of land. There's light over there, you can do anything. Hmm. You can do a real estate, you can farm. You will see it yourself. Very beautiful land in a very serene environment. Five acres free, I'm giving it to you. Just in appreciation of the way you are touching life. Lives, humanitarian services that you are providing for people hmm. all over the world. Hmm. Yes. Um. And I'm even touched to that, your wife is a Kenya. I was telling you one thing the other time. That yeah. The Kikuyus and the Avis, they have the same physical structures. So if your wife is in the Volta region, people mm. would think she's an Avis. Do you, you know see? that you look like Trudy's dad? It's really <laughs> amazing that yeah. somebody who uh, I regard as my son uh -huh. has gone to marry from a family whose dad looks like me. That's very interesting. <laughs> So I want you to accompany it to the farm. Thank you. I have, I have a maize, I have uh, uh, mango and maize on the farm now. Uh, you go and see. The, maize, the mango got burnt for some time and I'm now trying to rehabilitate it. Okay. But the maize is wonderful. That's uh, all I, I, I can't to wait to check it out. So can we go? Yeah, and we then? Can go. Fantastic. Yeah, we can go. because I'm super excited to go see my five acres of land right here in the water region. Can you believe it? Oh my God, wow! I started a project about 10 years ago. Okay. And uh, within five, six years, it was fruity. But bushfire came and destroyed the farm. Wow. It was originally about Three acres, but you can see what is left now. Yes, just few. Yeah. So, so because of the fire, I became angry and I, I deserted the farm completely. But my wife encouraged me to revive it. So it's now that I'm trying to revive, revive it. So these trees are ten years oh. old. Yeah. The mangoes issues, you stopped it at all. Yes, I've lost interest. You've lost interest? Because of the bushfire. But what? Now I'm into maize. I want to do maize mm. and then cassava, then coconut and uh, maybe some watermelon. 
Can we now move to the yeah. base bank? Maize doesn't have tap root, yeah. but these ones have tap root. If you are putting it down, see that it has tap root. It's a high yielding one that bears two, three on one stock. So my main thing is to introduce it and use it. I'll be an outgrower so that the farmers in this area can have improved variety. Because the local maize we grow here is not drought resistant. This particular one is drought resistant. From Malawi, we call it or, or, yeah. white, white. We call it the Malawi, the Malawian elephant. Oh. Yeah, the Malawian elephant. I don't know why they call it elephant. Where can I see my land? Come. Let's see my land. Put we'll papers on it. Cover it. I'm giving it to you forever. So you, yeah, if once you see this baobab tree, baobab tree, eh? yeah, this one, we, we we are using it for watermelon. Okay. Watermelon. It's only watermelon that is here. This is what I'm going to give you. Five acres. This way. This way. It's just a small portion of the land because the whole land is eighty acres. Eighty acres. If you take five acres out of it, what you have got left is seventy-five. You can do Thank mango, you. you can do coconut. Hey, wow, that's so what do you beautiful. want to say? I mean, I don't know what to say. Me, I'm speechless. I'm you see, shocked you see the you see the baobab tree. Yeah, there. the baobab tree. There. You see the other tree there too. Yeah, that's the boundary between me and you. <laughs> this way, they will measure it for you this way. That way. The ba you see the baobab tree here yeah, and this tree. That will give you towards this side. Yeah. Mm. But it's 80 acres. Yeah, 80 acres. But it's not too much. Like yeah. maybe people want to farm in here. No, maybe I've, some people will be my ten, neighbor. Ten years ago, I, I was giving it to them free. Anybody who wanted to farm to support their children. Hmm. But when I, I decided to come, hmm. I asked them to relocate. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Those who are still on it are my close relatives hmm. that have given some portions hmm. for them to work on. But I, I know people that watch my videos that would love to have farms in Africa. Maybe if they, because you know, wherever I am, people want to be there. Okay. You know, so since I have five acres here, if I want to farm, I know there are people out there who will also say that, oh, can I farm beside what I buy? But it's not going to be free. Yeah. I, do, you, do you think of selling even to people yeah, for maybe, farming? Maybe, yeah. Five acres, ten acres, fifteen acres. For somebody who wants to do a project, I can consider. If somebody is really interested okay. in going to maybe mango, coconut, or crops, mm. yeah, you can get up to about some ten, twenty acres. Because what I'm doing now is less than ten acres. Ten acres. So seventy acres plus is lying fallow. Nothing is being wow. done on it. Wow. I want us to go around the farm, okay. and then you see. So if, if, if you are definitely interested, I'm going to put a number beneath the screen. Maybe you can call him and negotiate. For now, he doesn't know how much he's selling it. But when you talk to him, definitely he can give you a good price, though. Why is it so important for an African to own a farm? Well, that's a very good question. You see that as Africans, before the whites came, we were growing what we were eating. Mm. And we were eating what we were growing. But now, we grow what we do not eat, and we eat what we do not grow. We have to reverse that trend. We grow, before the king, we were growing cassava, cocoa, maize, and all those things that we've, we fed ourselves on. Now, things like cocoa, coffee, cotton, etc., that we do not eat. <laughs> then we import rice, maize, etc., to Africa to eat. It's not a good thing. We have to reverse that. And I feel that we need to back, give back into the ordinary farmers mm. by introducing improved variety of crops. Yeah. That's why I brought in the Malawian elephant, elephant. which is a high yielding maize. If it picks up, then all the people in the area would get better maize too. Unfortunately, it has been attacked by army when tomorrow the boys will come and then spray it. Mm. It's about seven and a half acres of maize. 
Is the story building behind your building also yours, or you just came to meet it? No, it's mine. Oh, it's yours? <laughs> Something I have been, I invested in for about 21 years to complete. And I have 21 uh, rooms. So it took you 21 years to complete it? It took me 21 years to complete. Because it was, it was a project we started 2001. Wow. That was the year in which my daughter Jifa was born. The one at USD now, uh, USD. It took us 21 years to reach that level. And even as we speak now, we have not completed it, you see. So if anybody is interested, we can wow. buy some. 21 rooms, what are you using the 21 rooms for? Well, guest house. Oh, you want to use it for guest yes, house? Guest house. Oh, okay. When people come around, they can sleep. They, I think a very reasonable cost. Oh, okay. Yeah. So very that, reasonable cost. Uh, as a way mean... of promoting tourism in yeah. the region. And then, also boosting employment opportunities for people around. I mean, for 21 years of building, which means the funds were not there. Yeah, the That's why it took you so there. long. Yeah. But, right. So right now, are you selling it or? Yeah, if just... somebody is interested, apartment by apartment, but not the whole building. Not the whole building. No, no, no. Okay. Apartment by apartment, or maybe floor by floor, fine. Because the ground floor, we want to even use it as an expansion of the government technology oh, the school. Yeah, center oh. for now. Okay. Yeah. Then oh. after we have completed, the woman will now retire and give the government technology to the daughter. Who will run it as a business and then the mother will now take charge of the running of the guest house. I will concentrate on my passion, that's farming. I want to go into coconut and mangoes, you see. Yeah, that's something that gives me joy. Oh, okay. I like planting. Yeah. So I think I, I have to put a number on the screen. I don't know if they are selling it, but I'm going to put the number on the screen. You guys should reach out to this person right here and negotiate. If you are interested in buying a property, uh, maybe a room or two bedroom in the water region, I guess maybe this is the best option for you. You don't need to struggle. The house is already built. You just need to buy an apartment. It can even be a service apartment for you. Yeah. By the close of this year, everything will be ready. Well, Africa is not as bad as people out there think. Oh. The people are good. It's, it's, it's time for Africans outside Africa to come back home and support the effort we are making to develop our continent. Let's have confidence in ourselves. Let's build capacity for people who really oh. want to change things, you see, by supporting them in the work they do. I want to say thank you so much for everything. I really appreciate you. And um, I don't know what to say about the land, but let me know in the comment section what you think we need to grow on the land. And um, I'll see you again. I very soon. Well. Thank you for coming. Thank you. And God bless you. Yeah, God bless you too. Try and do something on the land. Ah, very soon. This land right here belongs to me. I mean, five acres of land. Listen, I've bought land before and the highest I've ever bought was two plots. Can you believe that I own 20 plots of land? I feel like crying, but no, men don't cry. I feel like crying, my men don't cry, man. Uh, I just want to say thank you. And I also want to tell each and everyone out there, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. Trust in God, have a pure heart, and God will take care of you. So I just want to say thank you so much, Mr. Biglow, for this. I really appreciate And I really want to make sure I start something on this as soon as possible so that you will know that the land that you gave to me, I did not just come on the internet to say I have a land, but I actually did something. Anyway, I want to say thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, share and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one. My name is Tunis the Ghana Baby, the one and only annoying village boy from Ghana. Peace out. Oh,